But um, Lynette, you're not doing your job, Lynette. Just to remind me to turn it on. But um, I, um, yeah, I, 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 I just, I normally sacrifice Thursdays for kind of more prayer time in the Blessed Sacrament and I go into the chapel or might read a little bit in the afternoon or whatever it is. But um, it was just, oh, I looked out the window and it was, I could feel the heat and the sun was shining and I just said, Lord, you'll have to come with me because I am going for a swim. I, I couldn't. So it was coming up to four o'clock. And I, I, as many of you know, the, the international, the Medjugorje webcam, it's live there from four o'clock. So you can join in with the rosary. And um, so I kind of, I was more or less on the road at this stage, but I was able to tune in even from my car. So I was blessed myself and I started. So even when I got to the to the coast, um, I I still had I still had maybe welcome Yola. I still had maybe twenty minutes of the rosary left, and I just sat there on the rocks. I went down by the the sea, and I just faced the sun was in my face and the heat. And I was just trying to concentrate, you know, people were coming by and walking up on the road, but I just felt I was in prayer, you know, from the moment I started, um, from the moment I, I, I am, I'm very well, Maeve, thanks. Um, from the moment I started in the car praying, I just felt I was got a grace to concentrate that's four o'clock and I prayed all the way till maybe 10 to five and I was in the water at five o'clock and I swam for a good half hour or so and I got out I met some wonderful people friends and just I just felt it was all so so normal and so friendly and you know I'd I kind of I kind of given the, the time to Jesus. I said, Lord, whatever happens in this these few hours, even though I'm going swimming and enjoying myself, like it's your time. And I met these people and I all very simple conversations. And yet I felt I think it was because I was in had been in prayer and I was concentrated that when you meet people you're also concentrated. You're able to tune into them immediately. You, it's like you have time. It's like a spiritual space to kind of tap into where people are. You're not distracted. You're focused. You're in the spirit. All these things happen automatically. It's like a knock-on effect of, of someone who is in prayer. It's like the grace is tangible and it, it translates into life. And it, I suppose there's a great lesson for all of us that, you know, if we want to make an effect on the world, if we want to, we want to witness our faith, whatever, whatever way that is. It has to come from, not from ourselves, but from a place of, of blessedness. And it all happens in prayer. It all happens from giving time to the Lord. I'm just sharing this because it really is, maybe it's the, the lesson I'm slowly learning in th this last week that my life is really not going to have its full meaning or purpose unless, unless I, I'm a person that's rooted in, in prayer. 
you know, someone asked some, some priest, you know, who are you? It was like a big open question. It's like a kind of a deep question, but he immediately said, first of all, I am a, I am a person of prayer. That this is the priority of, of his life and that everything else was founded on that uh, fulcrum that um, or that basis and standing. So I was there, I, I got out of the water and I met Tom, I met Michael, I met, I, I met Claire. Do you know, I was just in great form. I was like free in myself. I was, my smile was authentic. My questions that I wanted to ask were authentic. There wasn't the, the, the actor. You know, sometimes we act, we kind of put up with people. We kind of smile, but we were not happy. We, we answer people, but we just don't really care. We ask a question, we're not interested. And you know what? That's what it is to be a broken human being. But you know, God can not only heal the wound, but he can, not only can he restore our soul to peace, but he can transform it into his very self. It's the miracle of, of incarnation and divinization. It's called holiness. It's our sanctification. And you know what? It's, it's not big stars and explosions. And it's, it's small, 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 small little acts of love of patience, of kindness, of simplicity, just the poverty of the moment, not asking for anything, not looking for answers, just it's like being present and just learning to appreciate who people are and recognize who they are. And I know I couldn't have recognized people this evening for who they really are, or be open and be an instrument of blessing for them, unless I knew who I was, unless I had, welcome Katrina, unless I had the sense of myself. This aware, this, just this, it's called the peace of Christ. It's the gift that's given to us and it's not something you work out in your head and suddenly you, you come to kind of, oh, now I know, oh, no, it's, it's, it's like, it's like getting a hug from your mother and you just, you're not the same after it. It changes you, the love changes you. The mercy changes you then you can love. And even the love creeps up in you or the forgiveness. It's not as even you're not, you're hardly even looking for it. But you, sorry, I'm finished my apple now. But you trickle, you just tippy toe into that place of blessedness. And it surprises you. It's like you get out of the water and you're just a new person. And so I was talking to these people and it was all only 10 minutes and there was nothing extraordinary said or. But, you know, when I left them, I said, see, everybody, I have to go. I have a meeting tonight. I better get ready and have to go. So I could hear the see you, John. Right, Father. God bless. And one fellow, Michael, you know, he was begging for prayers you know i tell you the moments of grace he came up to me and he said john i need your prayers because my friend is dying of cancer and i've been with him in you know down the country and it's not looking good at all and his family and so he kept telling me his name making sure i'd remember 
like he was, he was so much relying on my prayers. And even when I left John, remember his name and actually funny, it's, you'll remember who it was because I spoke about this man. He's the man who was kind of into kind of Buddhism and all that kind of stuff and nature and um, he's a lovely man. Um, but I tell you, he was recognizing my priesthood this evening and um, asking, asking for prayers. And then another, another girl in the same converse, she turned to me, John, you'll have to pray for, for Joe. It's another f friend of ours we swim with and he had complications and she said, you know, we need to pray. And like I'm there, this is so, so real. It's so, it's so God ordained. And it was because I was aware, I, I just felt this is all God's work here. And I'm, I feel connected to it. I felt that I was being an instrument of ministry. I was like the extended hands of Jesus, not to over dramatize the moment, but like, that's it. That's where the ordinary becomes the extraordinary. And maybe it's just, it's only when you're in a place of grace that you recognize where God really is. That God is in all things, in all places, in all people, in all events. And if we can just be available. Let me give you another example. I was sharing, there's a few came on late. I was sharing how before I went for a swim, I was praying the rosary through the webcam in Medjugorje. And I just felt I was really concentrating, wasn't distracted. I felt focused and I just just concentrated on the words hail Mary holy Mary glory be to the father and I just stayed in that space for the the hour whatever it is so anyway I get finished my prayers and within 10 minutes I'm swimming and um yeah 20 minutes I'm 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 swimming along and then someone passes, James comes the other direction. We kind of meet. I just turn my head out and, and I see this hand waving and I kind of stop in the water. And John, James, oh, John, James, here's, um, here's, John, here's, what's his name? Here's John. He's uh, his brother, Jerry, that died. Remember there, Jerry. See, Jerry died about a month ago or two months ago and I think it was COVID related but Jerry used to come to swim every day Jerry was an extraordinary man that I got to know very well again a very unusual man and we might have different views on on religion and all of that but he was a man of faith and he was a teacher and he just had this extraordinary appreciation of, of the, the calmness of, of the sea and the water and this. He would just sit there on the rock and he would just, just walking around, talking to people, so unassuming. And I just got to see something very, very unique in Jerry. He, he, he was his whole basis was based on friendship and just being nice to people and being kind and having a chat and listening. He was quite private now. He was unusual, but when you got to know him, you always got a welcome and you'd, you'd be attracted to go over to him just to kind of, you'd know he would, he'd have an open heart and an arms for you and he'd, chat away and he wouldn't take your time but my poor Jerry died just he died it was something he got a heart attack well it was COVID related the family were devastated his sister was devastated the brother they all came down to see us all and they couldn't believe they didn't really know much about his 
swimming every day and all of that. But anyway, I was able, even in the water, I felt the Holy Spirit. Just when Jim, oh, here's John, his brother Jerry died. And I was able to tell this brother, I just felt the Holy Spirit was telling me, tell the brother how important Jerry is. Tell him how, what Jerry meant to you, John. And there I was bobbing up in the water. And I was saying, John, you know, I was so fond of Jerry. And he was a good friend of mine. And I could see James beside him, you know, take, wow, he was taking this in. And I said, you know, he, there was something very special about him. He, he had time for everybody. And, you know, I, was, I wasn't making it up. And this is what happens when grace takes over in our lives. I, I, I just spoke from my heart and it was, I was authentic. It was true and it was simple, but I spoke in spirit. I spoke in truth. And there's the freedom and there's the power of God. And I know that I feel the Lord let me say what John, this man, the brother of Jerry, needed to hear. Because I could see him kind of reacting. He said, who's this guy? Like, It's like as if he was able to bring Jerry alive again. And he was quite emotional even though we're all swimming now, he 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 was there. He kind of said, you know, we, you know, we miss him terribly. We're really devastated. Like I allowed him to just be vulnerable for that moment and just acknowledge his pain. Welcome, Amy. You know, I... That moment, the next thing I know, I had the head down. I was gone again, swimming again. And like, you know, what just happened there? This is how God is waiting to intervene and break into life circumstances and situations. And maybe the lesson we're learning, friends, is that if we're not people of prayer, you know, we're, it's very hard for God to use us with all our good intentions. And we can sit down and we can read books and we can type up notes and we can have great ideas. But unless we're inspired by the Holy Spirit, unless we're led and guided by God's grace, we're very limited. Whether we're ordained priests or lay people or married or single or conscript, but it really doesn't matter. In the end, it's about being open to the inspirations of the Lord. So, you know, today I, I, I just, I suppose there's a part of me can't pass today's gospel because it really is very powerful. The, the story of, I'm presuming it's Mary Magdalene that came to the house of the Pharisee when Jesus was invited and she kind of turned up. I imagine the Pharisee was reacting, but he wasn't going to throw her out when Jesus was sitting down beside him. So he kind of put up with her, I think, and she just sat behind Jesus. But very quickly, it was obvious that she she didn't care what the Pharisee thought about her mannerisms or her actions because she could be heard weeping under the table at the feet of Jesus. And the tears were falling on his feet. And she was drying his feet with her hair. Something extraordinary was happening. It was such an intimate, passionate, courageous act of, of love. 
and sacrifice and appreciation of this man from Nazareth. What is it? Then, you know, she took out the ambassador jar, Isle of Ambas Alabaster ointment, the jar of alabaster, and she, she broke it open, she poured it on his feet and anointed him with the, with the oil. The smell filled the room. The poor Pharisee could just look at this and just go, what is going on? Like, does Jesus not know who this woman is? Like, she, that she has a bad name in the town. She was obviously the, the local prostitute. Great sinner. But you know, if you read earlier in those Gospels, you'll see what happened when this same woman was thrown out in front of Jesus by the, the leaders, the scribes, and the chief priests. And they all had their stones ready because they were men of the law. This is how you keep, this is how you serve God. You live the law and the, the rules. And, and was it not written in the law of Moses that this woman should be stoned to death. They're interested to know how Jesus, is, what's his take on all of this and how is he going to react? Of course, we, we, we know the story, how he reacted. And he got down and he started writing in the sand with his finger, just, just writing like that. And um, and then he just looked up at them all. It's like, you know, when he's writing in the sand, maybe he was just, he was just being, just coming to terms with who he was himself. You know, they want to stone her to death and it's the law of Moses this is what's the right thing to do. This is how they to serve God the Father. And Jesus there, he's, he's just pondering himself. My God, sh Father, should I do this? Should I just stone her like the rest of them? It's like as if he was trying to work it out in his head. You know the way if you're, if you're trying to work out what the right thing to do is, you kind of just scribble or scratch your head or put your finger in the sand. That's the way I think. Even the humanity of Jesus was trying to work it out. Then he turned his head up. He just looked up and he looked at them. He said, whoever is the, the, the one that has not sinned. Let him be the first to throw the stone. It's as if he, he got this revelation from the father um you know you came to call sinners not the virtuous came to bring peace not not to condemn i came to not to condemn the world jesus said i came to that the world might be saved so he one by one, they were all convicted of their sin. And one by one, they threw down their stones, starting from the eldest to the youngest. I would imagine those who are more wise. And Jesus takes the woman by the hand and he says, woman, has anyone condemned you? And she said, no, ma no, Lord, no one. No, sir. And neither do I condemn you. Go and 
sin no more. I do think we're we really are touching the the essence of incarnation of who Jesus is of the miracle of the word becoming flesh and it's there it's 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 there in the gospel it's 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 made flesh and we see the we see it in the flesh. And Mary of Magdala touched it. Actually, she didn't, she let it touch her. Does anyone condemn you? No, sir, no one. Neither do I condemn you. I don't condemn you. And she she felt it. It she felt the, the forgiveness, the compassion, the, the love that transcended every fault, sin. There was no condemnation in Christ. Nothing. Only mercy. And she saw him looking in her eyes. And she let it in. She let in the truth. She let in the truth of God's love for her. She got walloped. Oh, what an extraordinary moment of grace that she could accept there was no one condemning her, that God was not condemning her. It was liberation it was deliverance it was new life it was absolute freedom and a new hope was born in her heart and it became new life the moment for everything else changed from that moment and we see it i'm sure it wasn't long after that that she turned up at the house of the Pharisees. And as I was sharing, anointing the, the feet of Jesus, it was like a reactionary action to her experience of being loved. And I, I am making an important point because, you know, our love, our actions, our Christianity doesn't come from nothing. You can't give what you haven't got. So it's coming back to what I'm sharing all evening, that unless we encounter God's grace and tap into the truth of who God is, and unless we allow that word of God to, to, to sow its seed in our hearts and do its work in us. You see, love is the prerequisite of everything. It's not us earning God's love. It, it has to be gift. It has to be something freely given, something that we don't deserve. It can't be earned. This is who God is ultimately. He's savior. He's, he is the price that was paid. He is our ransom from death and sin. He is our savior. He is our defender. He is our paraclete. He is our alibi. <laughs> I often hear Patrick Latta in Medjugorje. He, he gives his testimony, but he, he made a great confession. He went to this priest and he hadn't gone to confession in 40 years. And, you know, he cried when he just poured out his life and all the mistakes and his family and everything. And I think the priest was going and he kind of grabbed onto him and he was afraid to let the priest go because he said, you know, you are my alibi to heaven. You are, you are my means to, to eternity.
Maybe that's what Our Lady was doing for me this evening, this afternoon, as I prayed my rosary and I did my best, if you like. What can you do? Only pray and concentrate as best you can and go from one decade to the next. But, you know, I'm living quite differently this week than I did last week or the week before, because I, I did share... I did share my struggle of being on holidays and the deprivation of that time with the Lord and the lack of commitment and, and the effects. You know, when one is weak, one gets tempted and you give in to temptation. And because you're not strong, you fall in different areas. And the next thing you're addicted to this and that television, chocolate, drink, impurity, it's all there. It's like a recipe waiting, a disaster waiting to happen, an avalanche waiting to erupt and fall on top of you. And it, it does, it did fall for me. And I, I went through kind of this real painful kind of few days of, even though externally you wouldn't even notice, but I felt it. I felt empty and tired and lost and frustrated and it, oh, chained up in sin and addiction. And my God, it just, how did that happen in such a, just tell you how weak we are. But anyway, I was determined from last Thursday or so to, to practice what I preach. So I, I kind of made a decision every morning and yeah, what happened was, the morning sessions were beginning. The Thursday sessions that we have tonight were starting. We have also a Tuesday formation group that was on. So that kind of pushes you into, I have to pray now, I have to prepare. And having time in the group in the morning is like gold dust for my day. So I'm living differently this week, completely different. And my time with the Lord is, is more concrete. And it's like, you know, I went to confession last week or whatever. It's like as if I have pushed out what was lacking. It's not, it's like the evil just lost its power over me as I filled in what was lacking with the goodness and with the truth and the love of God. And I just discipline myself yeah we've started community prayers now in the chapel i'm praying with the other brothers and priests in my community we have our morning office and you know all this brings structure and it holds you and it always comes for me it's always about discipline setting pillars in my day of prayer and sacrifice and fasting and just committing to that it's not easy be Christian. It's not easy. But I tell you, it's so hard when you don't have God in your life. It's so painful when you're suffering because of evil and sin. And I'm just, there is a sense of gratitude to God that he kind of pulled me out of the mire and saved me again and gave me a, a fresh impetus to kind of get back into ministry if you like and get back into what it really is to be priest and to pray and to serve to offer to give myself you know it just everything suddenly has a kind of a a divine perspective again it's like now i when i what i do things in the morning i make my offering i say i I give you everything, Lord, my work, my prayer, my fasting, my, my sacrifices, my failures, everything. It's just everything becomes something to give, something to offer up. Lord, your will, because faith is strong, now I can walk through the, the wilderness into the unknown and yet feel secure and have a peace and a calm and a patience. And yet... See, this is it. it. You just calm down. You stop panicking. The anxiety goes. 
and you start to rest more and you're more relaxed. Oh, friends, I'm talking about prayer. I'm just talking about the air that we need to breathe, the spiritual air that has to be taken into our, our souls so that everything can fall into its proper place and that evil can't con control us or overpower us so that we can remain and we leave the, the kingdom of the world and we, we enter into God's kingdom, the kingdom of peace. Um, I think Mary, you know, I talked about praying the rosary today. I'm praying the rosary all week. And it's, again, it's not my intention to kind of get something. I just do what she tells me to do. It's like, okay, mammy, you're telling me to pray three roses a day. Okay, that's it. I don't try and question it too much. Maybe it's only in heaven we realize the benefits of every prayer we make or every mass we attend or every confession we celebrate. So I just, you know, just find myself asking her, just, I, yeah, when you, when you give the time with Mary, you, you, you come to feel that mother again. We had a lovely feast there yesterday, this Our Lady of Sorrows. Oh, yes, Our Lady's birthday was the 8th of September. I just felt her motherhood. Um, yeah, it was really Our Lady of Sorrows standing at the foot of the cross and Jesus gave, turned to John, he said, behold your mother. Behold your mother. I was sharing this maybe. We only knew how much our lady loved us. We would we would cry with joy. There's just such an intenseness about God's love for us and the love of our blessed mother for us. And welcome, Bernadine. And the more we give time, you know, I see Bernadine coming from Greenford we, next Friday now, or the first Fridays, they'll have three hour devotions to Our Lady of Magic Orient. You know, these are all spaces where we kind of come to that intimacy of Mary as mother. And just, she does help us to, to learn how to trust again in the mercy of God, because it all comes down to, in the end, she's pointing us to Jesus. She's pointing us to an encounter with, with compassion, with mercy, with forgiveness. We have to let Jesus look at me and say, John, does anyone condemn you? I said, I said no. I said, I don't condemn you either. I need to hear that so much in my life. Oh, I think we all do. If we'd all, we should. It's a grace to know your need of God. If you know you're a sinner, say thank you, Jesus, because you are a sinner, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> We're all in need of mercy. And I tell you, we heard it from today's gospel. It's only the one who has been forgiven much will will really love much. That's why Mary Magdalene was such a great saint, because she allowed God to forgive her everything, and she had a lot to be forgiven. She was a prostitute, a professional. If you ever read the stories of Saint or the Venerable Catherine Emmerich's writings on Mother Teresa or Mary Magdalene, it's most extraordinary what she speaks about the struggle of Mary Magdalene to accept God's mercy and how she even, according to Catherine Emmerich, she actually fell back into sin again and prostitution, even though she may have met the Lord and his mercy and forgiveness and maybe have washed his feet and anointed him with oil. 
she may have still, because of the strength of her addiction and her lifestyle and the, the demons that were in her, you know, she could have fallen back into prostitution. But we know the end of the story. She became the disciple of the Lord. She was there at the foot of the cross when everybody else was, was gone. It was Mary, the mother of Jesus and Mary of Magdala. And John and John, the apostle. The beloved one, it was people of the heart. People who, you know, John put his heart to the breast of Jesus. He knew how much Jesus loved him. It all comes down to experiencing how we are loved by Jesus. And he, he, he used to love to put his head on, on his sacred heart and rest. He, let, he, he opened himself, he let the love in. And indeed, our Blessed Mother, without exception, of course, or exceptionally, was open to God's love. And of course, Mary Magdalene, who let the love transform her, the forgiveness. Our lives of mercy only become lives of, we only become apostles of mercy, of divine mercy, when we experience mercy, when we encounter forgiveness in its when we when we let God be God in our lives and you know the greatest saints are the ones who who were overtaken by by that and I'm oh I just feel I'm just starting school here with Jesus I'm just barely in the in the door sitting at the back of a classroom kind of my head down nervous I'm happy to be in the class and I hope you're happy to be here as well because we have so much to learn about Jesus, so much to experience He's, and he will not leave us. He, he doesn't, he has all the time in the eternity, not just in the world, to, to, to reveal himself. Um, no, no. I'm just, I thank our Blessed Mother just for, you know, she's that woman of faith. And, you know, she just tells me, John, go to him. Go get up and just go to the Lord. He, he understands you. And it's lovely then because you, you feel the encouragement of the mother and, you, and you're still nervous going, oh, Jesus, look, I'm just such a wreck. I'm such a mess. I've just fallen again and I'm so impure in my thoughts and my words and my, I just, just so selfish. And it all splurts out. But, you know, she says, he understands you, John. You know, and, and I think Our Lady just takes us by the hand as a mother and, you know, she just brings us to that. It really is to the embrace of the Father. That's what who Jesus is. He's, so it's when you let forgiveness happen, when you let Jesus be your Savior, you find yourselves in the arms of your Father. The heart of who God is, the Father of, of mercy, of mercies. Um, can you see? how they all work together. They're all, our Blessed Mother has such an important role in the salvation of mankind in, in pointing us to, to him who is the answer to everything. Um, let's take a minute. So I think tonight I'm trying to give witness to 
what happens when you when we try and put God in the first place. And don't think the last week was a, day, a week on the clouds for me. It, it was a struggle as much as any other week, but it was absolutely different. I, I feel different. I, I know that I have come back into something to the blessedness and a place of safety. And I feel more secure in these days. And, you know, the, the battle goes on. I'm still, I'm still learning to trust and, um, Satan is always on waiting to exploit the moment and take you and instill lies. And he, but again, maybe this is how God operates. You know, when we grow in, in love, then when we kind of, our hearts are stretched and we allow grace to to have its way with us and we're more open and we're more concentrated. Oh yeah, that's another thing that has happened to me this week. I can pray. It's like, what happened? I'm praying Hail Marys one after another. I'm praying rosaries. But I couldn't do that a week ago. I could, I was so lost in my suffering and pain and addiction. And your inklings obviously liberated me in some way and I think you know as Mother Teresa say, says when you can't pray then just pray and then you'll be able to pray that it's like you have to break through all of that and you have to learn again how to how to concentrate and be recollected and be quiet and it's what I'm finding is that the more I sit here with the Lord and I go into the chapel and I have my time of adoration, even again this afternoon, this evening, uh, before we came on, it's like it's like the Lord was reaffirming again that identity and saying, John, the more time you spend with me in the silence and in prayer and adoration, it's like I'm forming you into who I want you to be. I want you to be silent. I want you to be a person of quiet. I want you to be a person of simplicity. I want you to be ordinary, John, but I want your faith to be strong so that I can turn what is ordinary into what is extraordinary. God doesn't want me to go out and evangelize and in that way preach from the rooftops. He, he wants me to shine, shine from here. He wants me to let myself be surprised as I walk up the road, as I go for breakfast, as I'm answering the doorbell. And that's all I seem to be doing these days and signing mass cards. I, it is, has been a struggle for me because I have no students. I'm in a transition. I, I feel people are looking at me and saying, John, why have we no students? And you're the director of formation, even though possibly they're not thinking that at all. But I think I'm feeling it and I'm it's under pressure somewhat letting myself get under pressure, getting fe letting fear in, getting anxious. And it's taken me from God, it's taken my peace. And so I've, I've had to really fight for faith and work on putting God and dying to self. And this is what Jesus is doing when he gets me to himself. He says, John, you have nothing but me. Let them all look at you. Let, let your, be, re, be rejected. I was rejected. I was insulted. They scourged me, John. Let them, you know, and I won't understand what's happening to me unless I understand who he is, Jesus. Then I can say, Jesus, I, 
I want to be like, I want what, who you are. I want it all. I want to drink the cup. I want to drink the, the cup of salvation. I want to share in redemption. I want to be part of what eternity is about. I want to be a priest. I want to make my offering. I want it to be a pure offering, holy and precious in your eyes. And so my heart is filled with gratitude. And I am in awe as I look to Jesus and I just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the persecution. I would mind there's probably very little persecution, but according to me, it's massive. And because my ego is so strong, if you only knew, they used to call me Ego Egan when I was in the army. Um, I was so self-conscious of what people taught of me and all this. And it still lingers in my my being. So, yeah, this is, a, this is an point I want to make that the more we grow in that love of God, then Jesus can start molding me even more. So I'm, I'm just saying, as I grow in the Lord in these weeks and as I commit to prayer and as I get to closer to Jesus, he's saying, now, John, let's we can do something now. We can kind of mold you a little bit more. So you're going to start feeling the weight of my cross even a little bit more, if we can humorize it a bit. That we we are invited to share in Christ's suffering. He lets us participate in a more intimate way with his suffering. So we go deeper in our spirit. We feel the weight of it. But because grace is strong and because faith is present and strong, I can. it's like Jesus helps me. His grace is there now. I've worked on my spirituality and my faith. And I feel the grace. So when I meet the, the, the weight of that cross, it's not that I have to carry it. He said, John, your burden is, is light. Your, your, your yoke is easy because I, I will carry it with you. I will share your. So don't be afraid of it. Just follow me. Just walk in faith. And I really feel this is the path that the Lord has me on at the moment. It's like my little cross I'm carrying and I don't know the future. And, and yet I have to die. I, I have to be crucified on that cross of to, to, I have my, my ego has to be redeemed. My vanity, my pride, my ambitions and my status you see, it's all there. It's all the unsaved part of Father John that is still waiting to be purified. And so I have to stay in the storm and in the darkness and in the unknown. And I have to walk blindly knowing. And, and I think the more you stay into prayer, the more you realize, John, you don't have to do anything. You just have to. Be who you are in the ordinary. Your little acts of love as people swim by you and take, uh, take your attention for a moment. and You're open. You're my instrument of mercy and love. Let me sort out the future of the Palatine Fathers. Let me sort out vocations. Let me. It's my job. It's my work. It's my plan for humanity. It's not yours. So, you know, get off your horse and serve me. I only ask you to be faithful. Let me do the work. Maybe let's, friends, we've come to the, kind of the end of just my little talk and sharing. Just we, we need to take some time because... The Lord is working on each one of us. I spoke a lot tonight about the essential dimension of our lives, which is the foundation of everything, which is prayer, 
prayer answers everything. You know, I, I would get it in confession. People would pour out sin after sin after sin after sin. And it's like the Lord was just revealing to me, he said, John, the answer to all of that is prayer. Because the reason everything is the way it is, it's, it's like there's no prayer. They, they have no way out only to pray. And you can't tell them what to do. It's they have to discover their way through prayer. Prayer gives us every answer. Not only gives us the answers, but it gives us the means to the end. It gives us everything is given. And it's not as if you have to understand who God is. or You just pick up your rosary beads and off you go. You know, I tell you, you ask anybody who's praying all day, they don't have any, they, they don't need anything. They're kind of content. There's no questions. There's no problems. They're not worrying about the worries of the pandemic. They're just, oh, I'm okay. God is good and but it's that's grace that's not something else i've stopped doing is stop looking at television i'm off of facebook these weeks i haven't been looking at my facebook I'm trying not to watch videos as much i'm trying not to listen to too much music and secular music i'm just making room for god it's it's hard when you're habitually not used to it, when you're habitually watching telly, drinking, staying up late. Let's, what is God asking of me tonight? No, let's look at our lives and just reflect for, we'll have a little bit of quiet. We might share if people want to share for a few minutes, but... Let's just take a moment and just, what is, just allow into silence just the Holy Spirit to, maybe if you have a pen and paper, sometimes it's good to have a page and just have a pen and just, just start writing. And you'd be extraordinarily surprised what you end up writing down and even maybe the Holy Spirit will, will speak to you through that pen. And um, God only wants our, our peace and freedom. He only wants us with him. Yeah, maybe uh, the first question we can ask is, you know, what prevents me? What prevents me from entering the kingdom? The kingdom of peace, the kingdom of, of God. What we can translate that, what keeps me lazy, what keeps me in fear. Everything that is not of God is the kingdom of the world, of the flesh of the devil, what prevents me from entering the kingdom? There's a great question that we could maybe write for, just give ourselves a couple of minutes now.
maybe just to follow on from that question, just to take another minute or so just to ask what, what brings me into trust? What creates that true safety and security? This is tied in with the question of what God is asking of me now. And you know, it's, this isn't a night of questions and answers. It's God wants to do something. He wants to, you know, I could have the answer now and I could say, oh, I need to do this. But until I decide, it's like God is waiting for our decision. It's, it's not like God is waiting for the, right, the answer. To, I said, oh, maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll try. No, we decide now. We, it's like now is the time of, of conversion. Tomorrow is too late. Don't wait. Now is the moment of grace. You know, when I gave up the cigarettes many years ago, I had been praying for weeks, but it was, I just felt I had this five minute slot as I drove the, the car to work. And as if God was saying, John, the reason you feel so amazing and wonderful and precious, it's because I'm blessing you now and I'm just going to invite you to give up cigarettes. And he held me and it's like I'm all, I was so scared. I said, what's going to fill that emptiness? I can't live without the consolation of lighting up. the Life is too boring for me. I need to be high. I was, I was so afraid of living without cigarettes. And he, Jesus said to my heart, he said, John, my love will fill every emptiness in your heart. It's like he promised me. He'd fill it in, that emptiness that I had inside me. That was, was, was a loneliness, I'd, I suppose. I don't know. I just, that word just gave me the courage. And I got those cigarettes and I said, there you are. It's all I want. And I had no, I had no cold turkey, I had nothing. I was like, it was miracle, 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 divine mercy in my soul. Just Jesus, just what a, what a miracle. I just, I haven't had a cigarette since, thank God. <clears throat> Please God, I never will. So you decide, I'm just the point I'm making you. You take the miracle when it's put in front of you. Don't wait till tomorrow to make a decision. What are you asking of me now, Lord? If I am going to grow and change and find peace, what is I was thinking that, that um, the song of Michael Jackson, you know, the one, going to make a change. 
um i was just i googled the the, the, the lyrics there and um just interesting you know it's he says, I'm going to make a change for once in my life. It's going to feel real good. Going to make a difference. Going to make it right. Great words, aren't they? Lord of mercy. And for once in my life, I'm going to make a change. It's going to feel real good. Going to make a difference. Going to make it right. And uh, just looking down to the, he said, I see the kids in the streets with not enough to eat. Mm -hmm. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their needs? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a great line. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. You know, we, we listen to this song for like, two generations two decades and we never actually listen to the words and the words are powerful i'm starting with the man in the mirror so he's he's basically saying it starts with me mm -hmm. i have to change i can't change it's not powerful isn't it yeah. i'm asking him to change his ways so he's talking to himself here he said john change yourself you know and no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. A powerful, powerful song. Wow. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him which is asking me to change his ways. If you want to make a world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. So we have just a couple of minutes there um, before we close shop. And it's just lovely to see so many um, here again tonight. And I know I'd love to just hear the wisdom and, and maybe if you feel the Holy Spirit, maybe just to hold on to the questions and a few people might just give us something. We spoke about what prevents us from entering the kingdom. So if you wanted to share your answers or just something that was striking you tonight, um, not to be too long, but just to really... I think we all have something to give each other so i'd just be quiet so if you want to put up your hand or if you want to just start speaking or i might come in father john just for one minute if that's okay it's yvonne here how are Where's you yvonne, is it it yes, is yvonne. just one minute so um, just, I just want to thank God again for you and for your humility and just want to thank God for everything about you. And just, um, I, I actually use that man in the mirror for some of the kids I teach in school. Okay. Um, so, and it, it's, it's absolutely, but I suppose what struck me is, is the, you know, you did say about ego, Egan, and it is our ego. And I think just in the last week as well, I've, I've been going, like I've actually... I'm kind of bit, bit, I'd actually ask everyone for, for prayers for me tonight, if, if you wouldn't mind. Um, I've literally been floored, but it, it is ego. It is ego that I have to die to at the moment because um, I can, we kind of did something at the weekend and people are ignoring me now. And I am a little bit hurt by that. But the reality is it's I actually was praying to God today and he literally did say, Yvonne, I died on the cross. So everything you said tonight resonated with me. He said, I went to the cross. There was very few there at the end. Do you really think it's going to be any different for you? Like, we have to join with the suffering of, of our Lord and God, who's, who, who without having him in my life at the moment, I would be dead. So I, lo I just love him totally and utterly. And um, I don't want to get too emotional, but I just want to say uh, thank you again. And, and what would prevent me is, is that ego that you think you know, um, you need that, that you need this recognition from the other people. And we don't, we just, if God, and I know for a fact, God is happy with what I've done and that should be all I need. And I have to break myself right down and thank the Lord that he's happy with what I've done and not look for recognition from the world because it's, it's irrelevant. 
So I just thank God for being with me. And I had to say that reading on Sunday at mass and it was about God is my vin vindicator. I will not be put to shame. I actually was destined three months ago to say that reading and I read it from the heart and I cried at the end of it because every word penetrated my soul and it was from the Lord and he is amazing. He is everything. He is my every breath. I am nothing without him. And the only person I have to bow down to in this world is my Lord and God and my savior. And I just thank God that you're in my life, and that you are my everything. And that's all I want to say. And thank you so much, Father John. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yvonne. We praise the Lord for, we give him all the glory. We thank you, Lord, for holding us. Thank you, Jesus, for holding me. For sustaining me, Lord, in my storm. I walk through the valley. I will fear no one. Nothing, for you are there to fight with your crook and your staff. Thank you, Lord. You set my feet upon a rock. I can be untouched. Um, Father, I just wanted to um, to say something. I I, uh, I don't know how I will follow Yvonne because what a powerful and beautiful witness she's just given. But um, uh, there was a lot of things that occurred to me this evening. But um, I suppose um, rather than taking up loads of time, um, do you know when you asked us what we need to do? to overcome whatever it is that's maybe keeping us from salvation or keeping us from eternity. Um, I was thinking of surrender uh, and prayer and trust, but um, I thought of something that happened to me recently. Um, and a number of years ago, I accepted a very difficult cross. And I was having real difficulty with it um, a few months back. And, you know, I knew that I had to embrace this cross, but I didn't know how. And I asked the Lord, you know, how, how do I embrace this cross? It's beyond me. And it came to me as clear as ever anything I ever heard was to surrender to it. That's how you embrace a cross. You surrender to it. You allow the Lord's will to be done and not fight against it. Do you know, you don't have to love the cross because it may be something that's unlovable. But if you surrender to it, and I think, you know, when, as I was praying and asking the Holy Spirit while you were talking, that's that's kind of what came to me. Do you know, um, the idea that it's it's uh, because if it's God's will and you surrender to it, and a peace comes and I have to say that a huge peace came to me about the particular cross I'm talking I was talking about and it has become easier and I didn't think it could it was possible but praise thank God for God you know and uh, praise the Lord so thank you that's all I wanted to say thanks thanks um, Myra beautiful thank you Shane I'm sure, uh, I'm sure people have written down something. So like, it'd be lovely just to hear if you wanted to, if you're up for it. It's good. To, 
but sometimes we think, oh, we have to just speak good things and tell everybody how holy I am. Maybe let's admit how unholy we are. <laughs> let's let's admit what prevents us from 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 walking, and just it's okay because it's it's a witness actually. It's 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 what a prayer meeting should be about. We need both sides of a story. We're all, we're here to encourage each other and. You know, when someone hears someone struggled, it's like kind of going, wow, that's, there I am. That's me. I can take ownership of it. Yeah. So. Greatest... Um, Anxieties in the sorry, I'm not speaking into the microphone. One of the greatest anxieties in in my um in my last days, I have to change rooms. Just between all of us, I have to move. And someone said the, the hardest thing, the next hardest thing to someone dying is to move house, you know. It's the most difficult thing. So I think I'm starting to tap into that reality as I I just I don't know where I, like I it's a small it's one room now it's I have two now I've, it's my office actually it's my my studio you're in and I could give you a guided tour if you want but it's all going to go like and I keep asking they're asking me Johnny when are you moving like when are you I'm kind of going oh my god it's, it's the end of the world here so I'm just sharing it kind of f funnily in the sense that you know your cross could be something very kind of not that important really but for me it's it's big so um pray for me too so we've, we've just a couple of minutes it's it lovely to hear a few more people if they're there so don't be shy thanks anybody uh, kind of put anything down for that question what prevents me from entering the kingdom it's the obstacles to entering god's kingdom big question I think I have to agree with Yvonne, Father, that, you know, the self and the ego are the biggest, you know, everything comes back to self, getting over um, my self-love, my vain glory. Yeah, it really does break it down, doesn't it?
Well, it's 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 a season for change. It's 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 a time of conversion. Our Lady is very busy in Magic Orient. We're all in this. We're all part of the team here, working on ourselves. So. The time for for change, and um, I suppose just as a part of me doesn't want to kind of I don't want to waste more time. I, you know, I'm going to Medjugorje now in October, and I'm kind of looking forward to the the trial of it because it's not easy to be in Medjugorje either. You have to pray and climb hills and. It was like there's a part of me starving for discipline and and just focus and um just I need to detach from so many things and still very attached to so much and um I just need to I I don't I can't do it on my own I'd be honest I I need strength I need a, a grace that's not mine I it's a bit like the cigarettes I just um I know it's only by God's grace, and I think somewhere like Medjugorje is given so much there. So I'm just part of me kind of looking forward to all that trepidation, really. Any any final comments, anybody? It'd be lovely to hear a few people there because there's some beautiful people are here tonight. I see you all. You know who you are. You feel the urge of the spirit there now. Come on. Not to push you or anything more. I think you're going to sing the final hymn tonight, Yvonne Ertinger. You? You're going to sing um, Michael <laughs> Jackson's. Man in the mirror. Oh, no because, problem. You know I will. <laughs> um, I sent I, a, I, I'll, I'll come in for the chorus. I, I actually sent a message there, but it, it went to Moira instead of everyone. I just want to thank you, Father John. I said if I if I started talking about my feelings, I'd be here all night. I'm well aware of how big a sinner I am, but I get great comfort when I hear about Mary Magdalene and Saint Augustine, hoping the Lord can work through me one day. So thank you all for your kind words, and and do pray for Father John, and if you could for me also. And will, we, will I start a few there, Father John? I, I, th- I think so. Lord, we just uh, thank you for tonight. And um, we just pray for, I'm just praying for all of us for the grace of, of changing our ways, you know, deciding for prayer. I would hope that a lot of us would feel, Lord, I need to commit again. I need to put pillars in. I need to get up early in the morning, Jesus. I'm going to set my alarm now. This is it. I am getting up before the children get up. Because once they start roaring and shouting, prayers out the window, I'm going to go to bed now. As soon as Father John is finished, I'm going to have my cornflakes and go to bed and I'm going to get it up. And there's, there you are, you're off, you're flying it. And I'm, tomorrow I'm going to pray my rosary. Whether it's one or three, or I'm going to pray a rosary tomorrow and I'm going to go into that church and I'm going to sit there for a half an hour or an hour. And if there's adoration, all the better. I'm going to, tomorrow's uh, Friday, tomorrow's, oh my God, Our Lady, are you seriously asking me to fast on Fridays on bread and water? I don't know, maybe tea and I'll have a bit of cheese or maybe a banana. Look, I'm doing that. This is a big, big sacrifice. I can't swim as far tomorrow because I won't have any food in me. So that's fine. I'll be too cold. I'll get out. That's fine. But John... Put seek the kingdom and all other things will work out. Amen. Amen. So with no further ado, we just hand it over now to <laughs> herself. We, so uh, by the way, I can't on. sing, but we'll ask God Yvonne, for some help. Um, Here we go. She, Here we she, go. She can dance, I tell you. <laughs> she can dance. Oh, it's all together then. I'm looking at that man in the mirror. Oh yeah. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no version could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. Come on, there's a verse, there's more. 
Go on, go on to the... That's me now, you have to take over. Anyway, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I know you're yeah. better than me. Go on, one more time. <laughs> Here we go, from the top. I'm starting with that man in the mirror. Oh yeah, I'm asking him to change his ways. And no better could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. Oh, come on, God. God, praise you, Jesus. <laughs> well, you definitely have a music ministry. I'm converted. Bless you, Yvonne. And I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of your, your star. And we're all praying for you and your, your intention now. And um, you just stay, stay standing. I'm still standing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on from one song to another. I'm still standing. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And through the intercession of Our Lady, Queen of Peace, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So God bless you all. We're the, the parish in Greenford are going to Medjugorje on the 16th of, of October for a week, They're staying in the Irish Centre. So um, I'm going to fly over from Dublin, meet them over there. If anybody wants to go from England or Ireland, it'd be great to have you. I'm going to fly to Dubrovnik on the morning very early. So, um, so th thank you. Thanks, Father John from Bernadine. Marie, Moira, Yvonne, have a good night, everyone. Um, so bless you all, and it's, it's lovely. It's been a blessed night, thank God, and um, we'll keep keep going. God bless, and um, we'll see you next week. Please, God. Okay. Good night, John. Take care. God bless everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Lynette. Thanks, everybody. And keep keep safe and keep healthy, Father John. You will indeed. Please, God. Don't thank get you. sick. No. God no. bless. Bye bye. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Bye -bye. Be happy, Father John. Thanks, Christine. Thank you. Good night, Father John. Good night. Good night. God bless. Good, God God bless. bless. Good night, girls. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye now. I can't see your lovely faces. Good night. Good night, Father John. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless. All Good night, Father night. John. Keep Good healthy. Night. Keep yourself yeah. healthy and happy. <laughs> no. Good night, Father John. Every blessing. Thank you. Thanks, Bridget. God bless uh, Marion and Amelia. Good night, Father John. Thank you very much. That was Thank beautiful. You. Thank you very much, Marion. God bless. Bye, Lynette. Good night, Father John. Good night. God Keep bless yourself you. safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you. Don't think of sadness. Think of happiness. No. And you'll be happy. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll meet you in Medjugorje, don't worry. Oh, my God. Good luck. I'm going to meet you there. <laughs> Hope so. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Fabian. -bye. Bye. Bye,